The following show is a Pod Avenue production. You are cordially invited to have dinner with the king. Pull up a chair and join WWE Hall of Famer Jerry the King Lawler and Glenn Moore. Enjoy. All right, we're back with Dinner with the King. I'm Glenn Moore, joined here by WWE Hall of Famer Jerry the King Lawler. It's been three weeks since our, our last episode of Dinner with the King. And, you know, we, we teased it out the last couple of weeks. They were recording today and it ended up not being recorded. And WrestleMania came. We'll talk about WrestleMania later on. But there is a good reason why that there has not been a podcast. And there is a good reason why that we're, we saved it for after WrestleMania to talk about this. But um, a very, very serious situation took place three weeks ago concerning Jerry the King Lawler. And I'll let him tell us everything about it. But um, just King as a you know, a fan and a friend, um, this episode is going to be very special because a, a lot of people, you know, obviously care about you. They follow you on Twitter. Millions of people follow you on social media. And this has been a secret for three weeks. So I think you should reveal what took place three weeks ago that not only uh, let us not do the podcast for the last three weeks, but um, a lot of people probably are, are wondering why that was the case. So if you want to take over, let us know. <laughs> yeah, if I want to take over. Um, well, and, and has it been three weeks? Let me look at the let me look at the date. Yeah, oh, it was on March the twenty first at about six thirty p.m. Uh, I was just here at my house. As a matter of fact, we were uh, I was scheduled to leave the next day on the twenty second to go to uh, L.A. or uh, Anaheim for the WonderCon. A buddy, uh, my Headlocks comic guy, Mike Kingston, was going to be out there, and, and uh, we had us a space uh, all at the big WonderCon. It was going to be the first time I'd ever been to the that one in Anaheim. We were going to go to Disney World the, the next day as, as well. And um, so it was, but this was on a Wednesday. We were going to leave that uh, uh, for that on Tuesday. And then, of course, we were all thinking about, you know, the hosting the, hosting the, um, down in New Orleans at WrestleMania, hosting the Hall of Fame, and and then uh, we were talking about doing something with with. I think at that time, I don't know if they remembered, or I don't know if they had already told us that, that Jr. and I were going to call the uh, the Battle Royal at that time or not. I think maybe they had, but anyway, just you know, we had a big a big week, a uh, big couple weeks coming up ahead of us. But let me go back ten to uh, Wednesday afternoon, around six thirty in the evening. Um, I had a stroke, just kind of crazy out of the, out of the clear blue, uh, sort of, I mean, I was feeling basically fine. Um, and, and you know, uh, you, you and I have talked about the story. I don't know how is the best way to go into telling exactly how this happened without telling exactly how it happened. But uh, Lauren and I were uh, together, and um, you, you, you may have to help me here a little bit, Glenn. Uh, how uh, the best way to, to phrase you were you were expressing the... love for each other in a certain way. <laughs> that's a good. That's that? a very good description. Uh, and anyway, at the at the end of that, um, I got up and. And I said something to Lauren. I, I didn't really feel anything. I said something to Lauren, and she said, "What did you say?" And I, I, I realized then I, that that whatever I said didn't sound right. And I just said then I said, "I don't know. Did I just say something that didn't sound right?" And she said, "Yeah, you did." And then she looked at me. We we like made eye contact, and she said, "Oh my God, Jerry, go look in the mirror." And I think what? So I walk around the uh, walk around to, to the uh, bathroom there, look in the mirror, and my whole right side of my mouth is like drooping, like all the way down to my chin. Wow. And I looked at Lauren, and at that point I said, uh, I, I couldn't even speak, and she screamed, "Oh my God, Jerry, you're having a stroke!" And so 
Um, we live a, about maybe five minutes from the uh, Baptist East Hospital here in Memphis, and she didn't even she didn't even want to call an ambulance. She said, "Just get in the car, get in the car real quick." And she figured she could get me there before an ambulance could. And she was right. As a matter of fact, they all said that was a uh, really uh, uh, helpful thing that we actually came in the car. Got to the uh, emergency room, went right in, and they just looked at me one, you know, just looked at me and said, come, come on, you're having a stroke. Put me right back into the um, emergency room. My, they checked. Uh, my blood pressure was 256 over 145. Yeah, so that's, I guess, what made me stroke out, so to speak. Um, and so then it was just, um, it was just a, one thing happened, that, you know, one thing happened after another. Um, they, it's, it's so, it was sort of crazy in the fact that, and I, I'm sure a lot of people have, you know, been in similar situations, but it's like, all of a sudden, you're, they, they bring a television into the room instead of an actu actual uh, neurosurgeon at that point. That's the way they can first do it. And there, and this this neurosurgeon that comes on television with me was out in California, and he's looking at me on a on a TV camera, and I'm looking at him on a TV camera, and he's asking me to do all of these different uh, tests and and all these different. Of course, there were, I mean, you know, there were like four other. Uh, people and nurses and people in the room, but this, the, the main guy was on television. It's crazy. Um, so anyway, they asked me to do all these things. Then they took me immediately down for a CAT scan. And that's where they found out it was a, um, a brain hemorrhage, which is not something you want to hear. It went, you know, it was blood, blood bleeding out onto your, uh, onto your brain. Uh, and, and that gets, uh, Excuse me. That's like the two different kind of strokes. You either have that kind, or you have a one that's caused by a clot. And a lot of times, the the the, the blood or the uh, strokes caused by blood clots can be cleared up really quickly if you get there really quickly with a you know a blood uh, thinning agent or something like that that will clear the clot up. But when it's bleeding out onto your brain, there's not really a whole lot they can do about it. It's just you know, try to control it. Um, as quickly as they can with blood pressure medicine or whatever. But once the blood bleeds out, there's just, there's nothing they can do about it. And the more, the more that it bleeds out onto your brain, you know, the more damage you're going to have, uh, from whatever, uh, I, I guess from whatever brain cells get covered up. By, they, they, they try to explain all this to me. It's like a, it's like a big hematoma once that blood goes out on your brain, like a big bruise in, in, in another part of your body. And it takes a while uh, for that for that blood to uh, dissipate back in. I mean, a long time. It takes a while for it to dissipate back into your uh, uh, off of your brain. Uh, so anyway, it was a, it was it was a pretty scary situation. I was uh, when they when they got me back from the CAT scan, they informed me too that the where the blood was bleeding out was on the, um, how do they say it the cognitive part of my brain which controls your speech and part of your memory and so um, so at this time I, I, I really couldn't say anything uh, and I, I could hear and hear everybody and could, could uh, you know I knew the answers to the questions they were asking me I just couldn't I couldn't say the uh, right words. So, uh, they, they wound up putting me in a little bit later on. And after a couple hours, they put me into the intensive care unit, um, the neuro neuro intensive care unit there at Baptist hospital. And I was in there all day Thursday. They were just monitoring the blood pressure, checking on, um, they took me down Thursday and gave me a big extensive, Oh, this thing was miserable. Uh, almost a two hour long, uh, MRI, yeah. where they where they put you in that big that big I don't know some kind of big tank. You had to be perfectly still. They put this like a helmet on you, and then all these real you know the real loud wild noises and stuff are going on while this thing is is going through every part of your brain, and that was that was miserable. But that was to see if there was any other part of my brain that was I guess uh, affected by that. Um, so anyway, that was Thursday. Couldn't speak. Uh, 
uh, and Lauren was there, of course, in, in the in the room with me and everything. And she was trying just to just to get me to, uh, and the doctors and the nurses and speech therapists people would come in and. And it was so crazy. Like, like they would ask me, you know, just different things, uh, simple things like, you know, who's the president? The main thing they ask you, you know, is what's your birthday? And of course, my birthday was November 29th, 1949. But I, I just couldn't, in my mind, I knew exactly what it was, but I couldn't get my mouth or my, I couldn't form. It was almost like I couldn't, couldn't say or form the first letter of any word that I wanted to say. And, um, and and Lauren said, "Well, look, let's let's let me ask you something that you should probably know. Let's play the wife game." <laughs> what? And she said, "What was the name of your first wife?" Brian and Kevin's mother. And of course, her name was Kay. And I couldn't say it. I mean, it was just like I knew I knew what it was, but I, just, I couldn't say it. And um, she said, "Okay, what was the name of?" It? Well, then finally she said, "It was Kay." And then so after she said it, I could almost mouth it, you know, a little bit then. And she said, okay, what was the name of your second wife? Which was uh, Paula. And, and I swear, I, you know, as soon as she said, what was the name of your second wife? It was like I tried to say Paula, and I don't even know what. She said, well, what letter does it start with? And I said, A. <laughs> she said, No. And it was, it was just, you know, it was just the craziest thing, man. Your mind, your, your brain is just, uh, it's just unbelievable what it can, you know, what can happen to you, you know, at a moment's notice and everything. So anyway, we got, then we got up to the the third, like I finally, I, I, well, I never could say Paula or Stacy or then, and then what was really sad was then she said, okay, what's my name? And I mean, that, you know, I really, I, I think I start, started crying or something there for a minute because it was like I could not say her name. And she's sitting right there with me, you know. So um, anyway, the neurosurgeons came in and, and uh, she, the, I, I think I had four different ones. Uh, they were all they were all really good, really great and everything. But the one woman, Lauren asked her, said, well, how long does something like this take uh, before it comes back? And she said, well, that just, like I said, depends on the, the, amount of brain, uh, the amount of blood that went out onto the certain brain cells and if they were damaged by not getting oxygen while the blood was on them. Uh, just, it, you know, it was a bunch of things. But anyway, basically, she said, from what it looks like, in his case, maybe six months. And then she said, maybe a year. And then she said, sometimes it doesn't ever always come back. And so then that's something you certainly don't want to hear. And now I'm thinking just like, uh, and I, I, I hadn't told, I think I told, uh, uh, I don't know if I told Orn to not to try to, to explain to her, not to call the WWE people or anything or Kevin Dunn, you know, of course, you know, who's my, uh, the TV boss guy and the, who controls everything that the you know the tv people do and so um but anyway she told me she said look i i know you're gonna get mad but i did i called kevin dunn and i told him what happened and she, she was right i did get mad and everything but she said he said you know just don't he said for you not to worry about anything you know every everything's good but all, you know all i was thinking about was you know hall of fame wrestlemania and all this all this kind of stuff that was coming up yeah. So then Friday, um, Friday, still in the intensive care. And honestly, I think they had the, the blood pressure back under control. Um, well, no, they did. I mean, it wasn't anywhere like the, what it was when I came in there. But, but still, the, the speech was actually even worse. So they came in late Friday night, and they said, Jerry, we're going to take you down for another CAT scan because it, this, you know, your speech is worse than it was. <laughs> Yesterday, so we're going to make sure there's no more bleeding or something. They were thinking that maybe it's still bleeding. So they took me down at like 1.30 in the morning uh, on Friday night, or actually it would have been Saturday morning, but and uh, did another CAT scan, came back up and read that, and they said, well, no, it's the bleeding is the same. There's no new bleeding or anything like that. But, uh, you know, we were just like wondering. We, we did that because the speech is not, any better today. So I went 
to, you know, probably went to sleep about two o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning and woke up at 8.45. I'll never forget it. I looked up at the clock, 8.45. I looked down at Lauren. She was uh, already awake. And I looked over at her and I said, my birthday's November 29th, 1945, mm. 1949. I said it right. I didn't say it. I said, my birthday's November 29th, uh, 1949. And hi, Lauren. Good morning. How you doing? And it was like crazy. It was like my voice was completely back. Mm. And it was like all of a sudden and nothing was wrong. And the doctors came in. Um, the neurosurgeons came in and said, wow. We, the one guy, the one guy said, man, you like really are made out of steel or something. But he said, I don't, we don't understand this. And so, uh, later on that day, they moved me into, um, just a regular room. Uh, and then I came home the next day on, on, uh, let's see. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I came home. Yeah. I think I came home Saturday night. Yeah. And so, um, and then, and, and Lauren had asked the doctor, uh, the doctor the day before on Friday, she said, you know, he's supposed to be doing this big thing for uh, what he's really worried about. He's supposed to be doing this, the hall of fame thing in WrestleMania. And, and, and the doctor told her, said, well, he said, I don't, you know, it, that ain't going to happen. And that was, you know, when I wasn't talking, she said, he said, I wouldn't tell him that yet, but that just ain't going to happen. And so anyway, then, uh, like I said, the next day, I, my voice came back. I started talking and they let me out Saturday night. And then of course we went to, um, we went to do a WrestleMania and hall of fame and everything. And I didn't, I didn't really tell anybody. Um, you know, I did, I, I did tell, um, or we did tell Kevin Dunn and then Kevin Dunn, I think said, told me later, he said, Look, I did tell Vince and I did tell Triple H, uh, but they said they weren't going to tell anybody. So it was it was like amazing that the story didn't, you know, especially in the wrestling business, anybody, anybody that finds out anything, the kind of story gets out. But nobody, you know, then when I did when I did uh, Hall of Fame, nobody even knew that that anything had happened. It's amazing, you know, and I'm sitting here. Um you know, in Cleveland while you're down in New Orleans and doing all these, uh, you know, WrestleCon and you're, we're going to talk about, you know, you're shooting a fireball at someone's genitals and <laughs> you're doing all these appearances and then you know, the Hall of Fame comes around and, you know, you're talking for coming out every, you know, every half an hour. That, you know, for two for, days. For, did, the, did the Hall of Fame last two days or was I that think, just part of my I, stroke I, that I was remembering? <laughs> I think Hillbilly Jim is still talking to this day. He hasn't left the arena. Um, but no, you, you did the hall of fame. You look great. Um, and then you did the, you know, the, you called the, the, the Andre, the giant Memorial battle Royal, uh, match with JR and, and Saxon. And you, you did terrific. And I'm, I'm sitting here. I'm like, this is the guy that just suffered a stroke. Couldn't talk just a week and a half ago. And here he is in front of millions of people on TV and no one has a clue. And I'm, I'm shocked too, that this didn't get leaked out. You know, I was thinking, you know, WrestleMania weekend, everybody in, in who's who in wrestling is down there. And I know, you, you know, you probably, you know, told close buddies and, but just imagine like what you said, you know, any, anything and everything gets leaked in professional wrestling from a finish to backstage brawls to guys fighting. And no one, no one ever leaked it out. No one ever reported it. No one even gave a little hint that Jerry Lawler suffered a stroke. Well, I think the very few people, I mean, I really did not mention it to hardly anybody. Um, but the very few people that I did mention it to, I said, you know, I really have hope I'm hoping that this doesn't get out until after WrestleMania or anything. So if I'm going to tell you this, but please don't tell anybody. And, and you know, nobody did. It was great. It was amazing. Yeah. And I'm, it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, that's why we didn't do the show for a few weeks is because obviously you suffered a stroke and you, you needed to rest and rest your voice. And then the WrestleMania week, we, decided, you know, hey, you're leaving for WrestleMania. There's a lot more important things to do other than the podcast that weekend with Hall of Fame and WrestleMania. You need your voice in tip-top shape. And, uh, you know, we decided to come back the week after WrestleMania to talk about this. And like I said, I'm very very surprised that uh, no one, no dirt sheets picked up Jerry Lawler's stroke. <laughs> and I, I kept searching uh -oh. on Twitter. I'm surprised it wasn't trending. 
I know. I, I, did too. I, was, I, was, I kept searching to see if somebody would say, you know, did Jerry Lawler have a, I'm hearing Jerry Lawler had a stroke. I'm hearing Jerry Lawler was in the hospital. Nothing, nothing popped up. And, uh, well, I think, I think probably the main thing too, was the fact that the, the minute I got out of the hospital, I just went back to normal life. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was just, I mean, we headed down, I had to go down to, let's see, what day did I get out? I got out, um, yeah, I got out on like the 24th and then, uh, you know, it was the fourth that I had to head down to, uh, New Orleans yeah. and I, I was, I was set to do that was, that was the, um, on a Wednesday. And as soon as I got down there, uh, I had to do a, uh, there was a meet and greet with, uh, some contest winners, uh, um, two, two gentlemen and their young sons had won some kind of contest on a radio station or whatever. And so they got to, what a, what a big deal. They got to go to dinner with me at some, some, some New Orleans restaurant or they whatever. Actually, <clears throat> I had dinner with the king. <laughs> they, had, they had dinner with the king, exactly right. And, they, and you know what was so great? Great. They were both big uh, podcast listeners. They were, they were really uh, fans of the podcast and their kids. Oh, their kids were really big fans and everything. It was, it was, it was a cool thing. So that was on Wednesday night. And then, um, then Thursday... I did the, uh, I don't remember exactly what kind of show that was. It was, uh, I was, I was like unannounced, but there's, uh, there was, it was a, a rest the WrestleCon super, uh, WrestleCon super show. Yeah. WrestleCon super show. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and that was, that was at, um, oh gosh, I don't know. This is sort of a, a, a pretty big arena there and the place was completely sold out. And they had this wrestler named Joey Ryan. Now you know Joey Ryan, right? I mean, right. I, I, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't get to. I mean, I do do quite a bit of independent shows, and I'm, I, but Joey Ryan was one guy I had heard of him, but I didn't. I, you know, I had never met him, and had, uh, you know, not a real big idea of what his wrestling gimmick was. But I found it out that night when I I got there, and they had told me. Uh, well, actually, they had told me beforehand, they said, we're going to have this guy go out and dressed as Andy Kaufman, and he's going to go and do the exact same stick as um, as Andy did, and then he was going to challenge some women out of the audience like Andy did, and then all of a sudden, they were going to play my music, and nobody knew that I was going to be there at all, uh, and then all of a sudden, I was going to come out and challenge this guy to a match like like uh, Andy mm -hmm. and I did. And you know, this was on the exact anniversary, and I guess that's probably why they did it. It was on the exact anniversary of the same day of that, I think the, 35 years ago, that I had actually dropped Andy on his head at the Mid-South Coliseum. The reaction was great when you came out. It was the whole, the place blew up. Oh, I, I mean, without a doubt. I mean, you know, this was, and partly because of what this was, WrestleCon is, is this huge event that goes on every year in conjunction with, with WrestleMania week, because there's so many thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that come into the city, uh, whatever city WrestleMania is in every week that there's, there's just, there's, there's a ton of stuff to do with WWE and access and all of the appearances that the WWE people make. But then there's so many more people there that there's said that um, there's a lot more stuff that goes on. They are, there are other different groups putting on wrestling shows. There's different, the WrestleCon, um, oh gosh, the autograph sessions and everything. That, that thing was unbelievable. I mean, I, I saw every wrestler that I've ever seen <laughs> ever in my career at these things, uh, at the WrestleCon autograph signing, sign and stuff. But, um, but anyway, yeah. And, and I think one of the reasons that the response was so good for this wrestling match was, uh, I think most people knew that this was like, uh, <sighs> I don't know how to say it. These are sort of like independent guys. I mean, the guy made a big speech at the beginning of, you know, how you people, we, we love that you support independent wrestling like that. Because most of these guys, were, well, none of them really were signed by WWE. Were signed by WWE. They were either ex-WWE wrestlers or, or independent guys that were hoping to make it to WWE someday. But me, all of a sudden coming out, I mean, here's a, a WWE guy, right? 
So it was it it did get a big response, and then it went along perfect with with uh, the fact that it was the Andy Kaufman, and the guy was doing uh, the Andy Kaufman shtick. Now you can you go ahead and tell them what what this uh, Joey Ryan what his shtick and, and his um, uh, I don't know I don't I guess his gimmick what it's what it's about. So I'm not I'm not a huge Joey Ryan fan. I'm like Jim Cornette hates Joey Ryan. And he hates him with passion. Pat, he hates the whole well. The, the whole gimmick with Joey Ryan is that his penis, <laughs> it, it, it earmuffs for the children. Listen, his penis is uh, is 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 like a, a well, <laughs> no pun. It's, no, it's impervious. It's, it's impervious. Like a, yes. It's like a super something. I don't it's know. It's an extension, no pun intended, of uh, of his wrestling moves, his rep, wrestling repertoire. And he, if someone grabs it, you know, he has <laughs> some sort of power to. You know, he hawks up. I, I don't want to say he, I don't want to say the word, but he he hawks up, and the person it's, who, it's totally ridiculous. It's, That's why yeah. Jim Cornette hates it. But it has caught on in the fact that I mean, you know, he's like the. It's so absurd that nobody else would think to do it, but he does it, and 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 it has caught on. He's got his own. Um, I mean, he's got his own following. And you know what? You probably don't realize this, but you, you had told me something that he even has uh, a, a porn website or something. But, you, you know, you know, his whole stick is he looks like Harry Reams. Do you remember who Harry Reams was? Yes. OK. Yeah. He was back in the day. He was like the big uh, male porn star. And that's he's got the you've heard people talk about porn mustaches, right? Oh, yeah. Well, that's what. That's what Joey Ryan has. He looks like Harry free, Reams and so, free mustache rides for the ladies. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's that's who Joey Ryan was. So I came out and and the great thing about it was I didn't know all about this stick until I got there getting ready for the match and Shane Helms comes in and he was kind of the agent for this match and um and so he's the one that explained it to me about what this guy does. And I went, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, so his, his penis is able to flip, a, you know, basically, you know, flip a guy over or woman because <laughs> ladies have grabbed it and had taken a bump from his penis. So oh, yeah. um, <laughs> it's that that's what happens. So his, you know, his penis is like it's like it's it's ridiculous. And that's I, I don't really buy into it because it's. It's, it's not, ridiculous. It's, it's, you're right. It's yeah. it's totally it's ridiculous. Not for everybody. It's a comedy. But I did. I did. It was a comedy bit, and I I saw an opportunity to uh, have some fun with it. I wasn't going to touch his penis or anything like that, which I explained to Shane Helms. But we came up with, or I basically came up with uh, what I thought would be a uh, a good little uh, a good little thing, and so we worked. It worked out with he was out in the ring. He did all the stuff about insulting women. He had challenged a woman to come to the ring. Boom, they played my music. Out I come. Now, this is just, you know, I, I, I did tell Shane, I said, you know, this may give me another stroke, having this kind of match with this kind of guy. But uh, I, I, I come out to the music, and he's standing in the ring. Of course, he's, he's like flabbergasted that here's the king. Uh, all of a sudden showing up with him dressed like Andy Kaufman. To, so then he stops and he says, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. He says, let me tell you something, King. I know Andy Kaufman was scared of you, and there's a good reason, because you tried to drop him on his head and tried to break his neck and everything, but I'm not scared of you. Hmm. And the reason I'm not scared of you is because in this state of New Orleans, the pile driver is illegal. Mm-hmm. Which was that you know that was they, they had just uh, that would just been in the news or something with the with these independent uh, uh, athletic commissions which they did have a an athletic commission and doing all all that stuff there so he said so you can't pile drive me Lawler so what are you gonna do huh what are you gonna do Lawler and I'm just standing there looking at him and then all of a sudden he spreads his arms out you know he he, he spreads his legs open. And he said, you know what I want you to do, Lawler? Mm-hmm. He said, I want you to touch my, he didn't say penis. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. And so, unbelievable. I'm telling you, I could not believe the response 
that that got, I mean, this place was sold out. Every person who was standing on their feet when he said that, it, it was like, come on, Lawler, touch my, and, and he kept going. And the people were just, they were going crazy, right? And so um, I still had, I still had my crown in my hand. I walk out and I get a little bit closer to him. And I give I give him the eye, and then I lean, I, I rear back, and I give him a shot. I give him a kick right to the groin area, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like Superman, you know. There's the there's the the uh, the super penis, right? <laughs> he didn't even sell it at all. Right? <laughs> so I'm just like you said penis. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, excuse me. <laughs> and so and so then. The people they roared, and then he's standing there like all great and everything, and 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 you know they the people. I mean, it was it was such a crazy response. It wasn't like they were for him. Uh, I mean, they, they were for me, but they were they were loving the gimmick that his that he did right there, right? So then he says, "Come on, Lawler, touch it," you know. So uh, I get a little closer again, and then all of a sudden. I shot this big fireball out and hit him right in the penis. <laughs> the big fireball, right? He falls down on the floor. He starts hopping around. He's going crazy. And I'm jumping up and down, you know, holding my hands up. He falls out onto the floor and, uh, and he's checking his package there and all this sort of stuff. And so, and then just like, just like in the, uh, the match with Andy where, the referee, of course, I had my hand raised like I, I had won the match because I, I you know, I, I did something bad to the, to uh, his his stuff there, and he's out on the floor laying down. But the referee disqualified me. He's not. A, I mean, you can't use a power driver, and you can't throw fire on somebody's uh, junk either. So anyway, so I got disqualified just like Andy did, or, or Andy won by disqualification down in Memphis. And so um, anyway, I, you know, the. The place was scrapped. All of a sudden, these people now, this was the end of the match. The only person that had taken a bump was him with, you know, from the fireball. And the people, the whole place started chanting, six-star match, six-star match. <laughs> oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ, this is crazy. So then I get back to the, to the back. He calls back in the ring, and he's standing there, and he opens his tights up, and he looks down into it, into his tights, and he says, I want you to know that my penis is fine <laughs> and, he back up and then he goes out. So that's, you know, it was, it was a, it was a funny thing. And I mean, I'm telling you, I couldn't believe how much response and how many people talked about that crazy, you know, that crazy match. But, uh, I, I haven't heard Jim Cornette's, I haven't heard Jim Cornette's, um, what his response was to it yet. But anyway, it was, it was kind of funny. Well, that's the definition of a fire crotch. <laughs> You're not kidding. <laughs> and I, and I, I'm not sure, King. Also, somebody, somebody wrote on there, said, this is the true definition of great balls of fire. <laughs> oh, God. But I, I think, I, you know, all the times of people have grabbed his crotch or he had his penis involved with a match, I think <laughs> you're the first person to ever get over on his, on his penis before. Yeah, that's what he said. That was the first, <laughs> that was the first time his penis ever sold. <laughs> But I think the best part of it and watching the video was your reaction and you hopped up and down like this is this is Jerry Lawler from thirty years ago. He's you know, he's like a little kid. He's hopping up and down. Uh you know, like you know, I that was a great reaction. And knowing that you just had a stroke, you know, a week a week before, and here you are hopping up and down like, you know, Jerry Lawler's, you know, thirty five years old again. Um, that was that was that was great to see. But then, so you had that night. That was a great reaction. That was all over social media. Then Friday night was the Hall of Fame. Well, Friday, Friday morning, I went and did, um, Friday morning started at like 8.30 in the morning Ooh. doing signing uh, at the at the WrestleCon. Uh, I did like from 8.30 until like 1 o'clock or 12, yeah, 12.30, something like that. And then headed over straight over to the um, Hall of Fame. We started. Gosh, I forget what time. I think they started um, rehearsals about two o'clock, and so that's where I got ready for the longest night of my life. <laughs> oh God! It was so long. It was five hours of people talking. And and you know what? I mean, and 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 Vince is great about this, and the fact that 
um, you know, Vince, Vince is out there and he listens to, I mean, you know, he's watching the rehearsals, uh, but, but the one thing that they don't rehearse is they don't let anybody talk or other than maybe say a few words of like what they're going to say at the beginning. Vince doesn't, he doesn't want to hear uh, what they're going to say. I mean, he wants it to be, un, I mean, you know, just, it's going to be their moment. And, and, and that's all, you know, that's all great and good. And that's, that's why it goes so long. He, he, you know, he, they don't, I mean, he, I think he feels like it's, as uh, it should that, you know, this is their moment. These people are, they're talking about their entire career being, you know, they're, they're going to have to describe it in as, as, hopefully what will be, um, you know, uh, not forever, but anyway, he, d he's not going to put a time limit on anybody. And so that's why some of these go longer than others, uh, because there is no time limit on anybody. So, um, and, 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 you know, some of them, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're like all entertaining, but then by the end of the night, you look down and you're going, Oh my gosh, how long is this gone? I mean, so, um, it, it was tough. At one at one time we were you know we were talking we we're standing backstage and like we started it started at like six thirty, mm -hmm. uh, I think. And I I'm well really even before that I didn't even get a chance. I I bet probably from five o'clock, I'm standing up, and never sat down again, uh, not even in a chair or in the back or anything. Never sat down again till after midnight. So it was just standing up, walking back and forth, going out and doing the stuff and listening to everybody's thing and then going out and doing the next one, then listening to theirs, then going out and doing the next one, listening to theirs. Um, so it was it, it, it was a long night. And I, I I think everybody at some time or other, somebody's people are saying, you know, what what can we do to get these little you look over vents over there, you know, and, and, and uh, my, one of my suggestions was I said, you know, and then I thought, well, this doesn't really happen to Vince, I'm sure, but but it does happen to most people. You know, sometimes you go into a restaurant and your table's not ready, and they hand you one of those little vibrator beeper light type things. Yeah. Right. And then I thought, Vince has probably never done that. <laughs> right. I would imagine. <laughs> but, but it has happened to me. So I said, you know, they hand you one of these little vibrators. I said we should you know, get some of those little vibrators. Set them on like ten minutes, and let the person put it in their pocket as they go out in their in their tuxedo. And at ten minutes, that thing can just barely start beeping where they can feel it, and 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 so they'll know, hey, it's it's time to go. And then maybe at fifteen minutes, it can start beeping a little harder. And when it gets to like twenty minutes, it can give you like a shock or something, you know, like something like that to where you know you got to get off or something. But. Uh, it, it, everybody, you know, everybody felt that it was it was kind of long. It didn't. It was over almost like at midnight. Yeah. Well, maybe they should, you know, have less uh, inductees. That's an, that's another we. That's another good idea. Maybe yeah. have a few less. Right. Um, the one that really, the whole, out of the whole night, you know, I I love listening to the speeches because you know these are people that I enjoy watching as a kid, and it's sure. great to let, let them you know ramble on and give thanks and tell stories, especially Hibbley Jim, um, but. There was one really moment that made me tear up, and it was that that was when Mark Henry, um, you know, pleaded with uh, you know Martha Hart about Owen getting the Hall of Fame, and he started breaking down and crying, and uh, that was a very you know touching moment. That's probably the moment that sticks out in my mind from the whole evening. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like you don't like that moment? I I don't think it. What did that have to do with Mark Henry? I, well, you know, I well obviously they're very close, uh, Mark and Owen, and I think it was him using his platform at the time to plead with Martha to get let whatever's going on behind the scenes, and I don't know, but to let Owen be recognized for what he did in the professional wrestling business to be included in the WWE Hall of Fame one year. Yeah, well, I don't think that was the place to do that. No, no, I didn't. I didn't think it at all. But I mean, who who knows? You know, that's just. I mean, tr I mean, trust me, the WWE. I, I can assure you, the WWE wants would love to have Owen Hart in the Hall of Fame. Right. And so, there's no there's no need to plead to anybody in the WWE. Well, no, he he wasn't pleading to WWE. He was pleading to Martha. 
Who? Martha Hart. You think she's watching that? Uh, no, I don't think so. There you go. But I'm sure that she was notified. Well, <laughs> just I'm just saying, call her up on the phone. Yeah. If you're that close to friends, and and plead your case, plead your case there. Yeah. I just don't. I just you know there was just I just didn't think. And and hey, and I'm not I'm not saying that's just my my personal opinion. I'm sure Mark thought that that was the a, a good thing to do, and that's fine. But I just I don't. I don't think it helped. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, you were back there. Was anybody upset that he did that or? I'm not going to say. No. Okay. <laughs> As a fan, it was, it was very touching to see that, I guess. Okay. As a fan's answer. Uh, Hillbilly Jim talked a lot. I did that. He told a lot of great stories though. Hillbilly Jim. Yeah. <laughs> was great. Um, it was good to see, you know, Jeff Jarrett, uh, the singing part, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and those those two idiots they got out there and rehearsed that thing for like a, an hour, and then neither one of them could remember the words, and the words were written on the on the freaking screen. It's crazy. Um, Goldberg, poor Goldberg. Um, him coming out, you know, he's the main guy, <laughs> uh, well deserved to be in the Hall of Fame, and he comes out and basically, I mean, the fans were sticking around, but when they showed a there was a, a picture a fan took of you know, all of the WWE people and about three fourths of the people cleared out before Goldberg. So poor Goldberg for not having a full audience for being the main guy. Yeah. And that's just, that's one of the unfortunate things that happens when you're the, when you're on last and it goes so long. That's, so, you know, that's, that's why you're sitting there thinking, man, oh man, what, what can we do to make this not go so long next year? You know, I, re- I remember one time at, at one time when, when, um, uh, Goldberg wanted, you know, he wanted to say something to the certain uh, members of the, you know, of the WWE guys, and he said, uh, "Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns, we are, uh, uh, oh, Roman Reigns gone. <laughs> he was already gone, right?" So I mean, yeah, that 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 did happen, you know. So so if you're a talent, you're not required to say the whole time. You you can leave whatever you want. Obviously, I, you can leave. I mean, they left. Obviously, you can. So, and sometimes you just have to. I don't know. I mean, you know, I think they just have to take a, a break every now and then. But, I mean. They you left. Know, uh, well, no, you know what? Uh, not a lot of them had actually left. A lot of them were, st- like, in the back and bathroom breaks and different things. Um, but th- there were some. I mean, I, I would, you know, every time I'd go out there, I'd look <clears throat> at certain pe- people and the most, you know, the most of them, uh, the main ones stayed. Right. Um, and I, I kept saying, and it, it may be something because of the, uh, 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 she's used to listening to filibusters or whatever, but great. Linda McMahon never moved from her seat the entire time, right to right on the front. And she never, you know, she, she never moved. She was right there throughout the entire time. Uh, and, but I mean, there were, there were a lot of, them, but, uh, Stephanie, Triple H, they were, they were all there right, right throughout the entire time, you know, but Ronda Rousey, was long. Also there. Ronda Ronda stayed the whole time. Sting stayed yes, the whole she did. time. She sure did. Yeah. So it was great to she, see, uh, Ronda. Good old JR stayed the whole time. He didn't, you guys didn't fall asleep, JR, right? You got a lot of thanks. They are a lot of, a lot of people thanking JR. Yeah. Thinking. So did you, you got a few right. thanks from, from the Memphis, you know, Jarrett mentioned you. I think Hibbley Jim mentioned you. So. King. You know what? I was I was really proud of the fact that there was there was a lot of um, yeah there were there, there were a lot of people that had you know a little bit of Memphis tie-ins to this to this Hall of Fame and even going even going so far back uh, one of the things that was really cool was you, you remember seeing the the Legacy Hall of Fame you know that they do every year where they yeah. include you know some people and it, there was Sputnik Monroe Sputnik Monroe got into the WWE Legacy Hall. Of fame and Cora Combs. Cora Combs was one of my, I mean, Cora Combs lives here in Nashville. And I didn't even realize it said that she was one of the first, one of the first women to ever wrestle in the first women's match in Madison Square Garden. Wow. And, and, uh, but then Cora Combs came and lived in, in, uh, in Nashville her the entire rest of her life. And she was a great friend of ours and worked down here, Cora and her, her daughter, Debbie Combs. They worked down here in Memphis forever, and uh, they were they were wonderful people. So, uh, any other tidbits from the Hall of Fame before we move on to the to WrestleMania? 
Anything anything uh, juicy happened? Did, uh, well, what's the, what's the rule about Vince? You know, you can't you can't mention Vince. They can't in the speech. They can't you know gramble about Vince or they don't he doesn't like that. I guess someone said that. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, don't talk he, about me. Well, right, and, and because you know, I I think that um, I, I don't even I don't even know why because I I think that. Uh, it should just go without saying, you know, I mean, anybody that's ever worked here, you, you got to thank Vince McMahon, you know, but, but so he's saying, don't do it. I mean, just, just, it, it, I, I appreciate it. And, and you don't need to tell, you don't need to go in and, and, and thank Vince McMahon. It's just, it's just a, a waste of time almost. Yeah. I think, and, I think and, if, if everybody thanks Vince McMahon, it turns out to be a, a Vince McMahon appreciation night rather than a whole exactly thing. yeah exactly and then some some of the guys would 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 uh you know I think want to go out there and and do some extra brown nosing or something like that to, uh, if they could so that he just he just discourages that and I don't blame I don't blame him a bit there is nobody no, nobody in the back likes to like to have their main name mentioned back there there is one photo uh, from Hall of Fame it's a photo of Jeff Jarrett hugging, bear hugging Vince McMahon and Triple H is standing next to them. I and there's a caption of a fan that said, "Hell has officially officially frozen over." <laughs> <laughs> but that was uh, oh, well. that was great. <laughs> you know what? But that, that was cool. I mean, that's one thing that's cool about the um, uh, Hall of Fame, and I've noticed this over the years. It's like that's that's the one place that it seems like who knows if it really is, but it, at least it seems like everything is forgiven. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not just talking about Jeff or whoever, but I mean, I, I mean, back when the ultimate warrior came back and there was, and Bret Hart and, and different guys, it seems like truly at, at the hall of fame, if there's ever been any bad blood or animosity, it seems like it, that's the time that it's all forgiven. So with I, and that you know I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, one one thing that I thought was really cool was um, um, when like certain certain people, and especially like the uh, the guys that are going in the celebrity hall of the wing or whatever, you know, they'll stay back. They have their own dressing room and everything. And then uh, uh, on this time, Kid Rock, he he came up. Uh, on the like right before whoever was going on before him, he came up. They had his chair sitting there for him, and I, I was I was really excited about one of the the time he came in to the back. And there's probably there's probably twenty five or twenty people in the backstage area right there, the little small area, um, the production area, the the gorilla position for for the um, for Hall of Fame. There's maybe 20 people, you know, sound guys and and, and vents and different ones there. Um, and so when the, the cool thing, at least for me, was um, Kid Rock, the only, only person he came up to was me. And he gave me, gave me like a big hug. And he said, King, he said, I don't know if, he said, I don't know if you're going to get a, um, how do you say it? He said, you deserve a, you deserve a bump and pay after tonight. <laughs> he said, you're doing a great job. And I said, wow, thanks. But, um, but Kid Rock, I, I thought I thought was cool too. Uh, you know, he started to go off into that little uh, political stuff, but then he brought it back, and 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 I thought I thought he did a I thought he did a real good job too. He wanted to body slam some Democrats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then he then he got it all back together when he said, "Can't we just all get along? Can we you all know? just get along." But no, I have uh, I have you know I've been to WrestleManias and different pay-per-views and raws and smackdown but the one event that i have not been a part of or seen as uh, live is the hall of fame ceremony so i, I have a bet for you king I, I i i had extra seats this time too oh. at the last last minute lauren didn't go this was the first time in like eight years that lauren didn't go with me to to wrestlemania or hall of fame and you always tell hers. me like you're like glenn you know because when wrestlemania season rolls around I'm sure people come out of the woodwork for to get tickets and to get backstage stuff and. Uh, oh my gosh, they do absolutely. So you always, you know, you say, Glenn, you know, I 
I can't get you for WrestleMania. You know, it's 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 hard. They only allow X amount of tickets, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, King, it's totally fine, you know. But then, you know, I, I get a text or you tell me, you know, later on, oh, I had extra tickets. Oh, Glenn, you should have came. <laughs> I'm like, well, King, I don't want to be the guy that, to, to ask you about the coming for everything, but but I, I have a bet. I want to earn my ticket for next year, King. I have a, I have a proposition for you. Okay, what's that? I know you always make fun of my weight. Not always. <laughs> Every day you make fun of my weight. No, I don't. I know. <laughs> so I want to earn the Hall of Fame ceremony ticket. If I I have one year, and I want to look good because you get a tux. I'm gonna get a. A nice yeah, suit. you gotta have tux. Yeah, a nice suit and everything, tux, and I want to look good. So if I lose some weight before next year, you get to take me to the Hall of Fame ceremony. Now we got, we got to come with a figure. We got to come with a, with a <laughs> no pun intended a round number for 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 the amount of a weight. Round number. So okay, I, well, all right. I mean that that sounds good, and then that's that's a great incentive. So what uh, what is I, right now? What do you weigh today? Do you know? I do not know. <laughs> if, if I did, I would not say on the podcast. Well, I don't care. I mean, it's well over three hundred pounds. Ooh. So um, it's not good. I'm probably I'm probably the heaviest I've been uh, in my entire life right now, which is not very, and I'm very. Very uh, sensitive about it. Um, so I want to earn my way. I want to I have a goal because I'm very lazy and I procrastinate about working out and eating right. I, I need to have a goal, King. So I have one year goal. Right, so you you say you weigh well over 300 pounds? I mean, probably about 330. Okay. So then we, we got to get you under, definitely under 300 pounds. Right. Yeah. So I Three, so I figured a pound a, a pound a week. And Ooh. then we'll just round, you know, that's what, 52 week, 52 weeks in a year. Ooh. So we'll round it up to 60. How So 60 pounds and we'll, you know, we'll do like a weigh in a month before WrestleMania too. So if I can. So you need to weigh 270 pounds. 270. Wow. That'd be good. All right. I'll take that bet or that proposition. And if I, if I don't, if I don't get it, I don't get any special perks for mania for anything. What do I get? Anything? You get a you get a a, a, a trim Glenmore to a company. No, I mean I mean if you don't if you don't lose the weight. Oh well, I mean I don't know. I what do you want? I, I take I take somebody else to WrestleMania, right? I mean, well, if you have Lauren or whoever you want to take, I mean, your family or whatever. But I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. But it has to be. Yeah, you got to win something. What do you What do you want? I gotta do something bad, or take a power driver, or <laughs> take a fireball, you to gotta, take a take a fireball. You have to do like uh, you have to do like the coach up in Cleveland, jump into Lake Erie naked. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> I ne- I have never been in Lake Erie. Never, never stepped one foot in Lake Erie. What? Yeah, I've been through all my life, and never oh stepped one God. toe. It's nasty. The water's nasty. I know, but we, when I was up there as a kid, I used to we would go out in it every day in the summertime. So that's what's wrong. Swim in it and everything. So you put, fish everything. So, uh, well, I'll jump in Lake Erie then. No, you don't have to do that. But I, I got I got faith in you. I think you'll do it. We'll. I, I think just that's the only thing you're gonna you're gonna. I don't have to win anything. You're just gonna have to um, you have to lose that weight in order to have a special day at the hall of fame that you've never been at before. Never. And I mean, that's, I want to sit through that. I mean, I'm crazy anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, so it's going to be, it's going to be in New York next year, WrestleMania. And that'll be a, a, a nice, uh, nice weekend. So, okay. So Saturday comes around. You have nothing planned for Saturday. You get WrestleCon, right? Uh, 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 yes. Yeah, Saturday comes around and I did do WrestleCon again. And, um, that's where you know I did see a few people. Uh, Bret Hart came over and and I told Bret about the stroke and then you know he he mentioned um, you know he talked about his stroke. You know you remember um, how many years back has that been that Bret had a stroke? He was riding a bicycle and oh geez I I can't remember the year. I did tell him I said Bret I was doing something more fun than riding a bicycle when I had my stroke. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, 
but um, but but you know what he and he and he told me he had the same he had the same type two thousand two. 2002 he had the same type where it, you know had bleeding on his brain and he and he said that it's it just you know he's just you never know how it's going to happen he said he really got back about about 85 percent uh you know i mean he didn't everything he, he still has problems with things to this day you know sometimes your speech and sometimes different parts of your your body and everything and i think a lot of it has to do with you know, if you get the proper amount of rest and and all all of that sort of stuff too. And then Jerry Briscoe told me exact same thing. Jerry Briscoe had had one the same type thing, and uh, you know he still has has problems with his as well. I mean, to get back on the subject of what ha- what happened to you. I mean, are you? You know, we we talked about we've we've talked about death on this podcast. We talked about everything underneath the sun. But with you in your in your mind, I mean, we talked about it before. You get you feel like you're not your age. You feel like you're twenty to twenty five years younger. You're still wrestling. You're still active. You're, you know, still doing all the things that you did thirty years ago. But, I mean, you can't outrun Father Time, and not any of us can. So, how do you feel? Well, no, no. How do you feel like about having this stroke and your future with wrestling and 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 WWE? I mean, what what's your what's your what's your future with after the stroke oh i'm not going to change a thing not not one thing do the doctors say that i mean you're so you're fully 100 percent recovered then or oh <laughs> i guess i mean have any side effects any dizziness any i mean i don't know the side effects uh, long term no, no not not really i mean you know they gave me this big sheet of different things that can happen to you um, are different things that you can should watch for if you're thinking about having another stroke. I think the one main thing for me, especially, is keeping the blood pressure under control. Um, uh, so no, I, I went back to my. I actually went back to my cardiologist yesterday, which was the first time in um, like two years that I'd gone to see him, and that was that was another thing that probably helped uh, cause the the stroke was the fact that I hadn't been back to see my cardiologist in over two years. And they had gotten to a point where like a couple of months ago, they said, we can't keep re prescribing you your, your blood pressure medicine until you come back in and just let the doctor check you over. And so I think I had gone maybe like a month or so without the blood pressure medicine too, before the stroke. So anyway, uh, so now I'm back on track on all that regular stuff. And, and yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm, uh, fine. Yeah. And you're about, you're going to rest. Did you, did you see, maybe we talk about this in a second, but last night was the, uh, was the HBO special or documentary or whatever on Andre the giant. And, um, it was was so funny. I got to, you know, it was, I, I just thought the thing was great. Andre was an awesome individual and it was so cool to get to, you know, be watching all of this stuff and then to realize, wow, you know, I work with this guy so many times and, 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 and got to really, you know, be around him and know what he was really like and that sort of stuff. But the, a lot of the stuff I, I, I learned, um, I learned something about Vince McMahon right at the very end of that uh, Andre the Giant special. And I... I think maybe that it's something that I have had too, but never really, never really thought about it my whole life. They asked, um, they asked Vince about how they put it about, did, how did Andre the Giants uh, death affect you? And Vince hesitated, he pondered any thought and he said, he said, I have a certain, I, and I can't even, I can't remember exactly the way he said it, but he said, I, there's something about me that I put bad things out of my mind in a hurry. He said that, I'm going to correct you before you get into it. He, okay. w- he was asked, what was your last conversation with Andre? And okay. That's when he. That's where. The, that's the answer he gave was. You know, I, I tend to put negative things, you know, out of my mind. I, I forget about it after it happens. Um, so he answered that question to what was your last conversation with Andre? 
Right. So but then, but it was, but it was also then the next thing they were asking was how did it affect you? And and of course it was it was that it affected him a lot. But what I was getting at was he said, like you said, there's something about me that I put negative things out of my mind in a hurry. And and I've always when he said that, I, I just looked back at myself and I said, I think I do that too. You know, I mean. And when I about certain things like the the cardiac arrest, um, it was like I put that out of my mind just as soon as as soon as I got out of the hospital and this this the stroke thing, you know, I put it out of my mind just as soon as I got out of the hospital. I mean, you know, I've like we we I did the whole WrestleMania week. Then this past Monday night, our uh, our slow pitch softball league started. You know, I went right out, had a, had our first game, uh, went to two for three, um, you know, just, just like nothing had ever happened. You know, I just put the, I just put that stuff out of my mind and keep on going. Like, uh, like I've always been doing. Well, I'm sure a lot of people listening to this, a lot of, you, a lot of the fans, loyal listeners of the show, loyal listeners of you, the kid, you know, you, the King for so many decades, um, they're going to be concerned for you. They're, you know, but probably going to tell you, you know, well wishes via social media. But um, you're not going to, you're not going to change what the king does on the regular <laughs> basis. That's ma- that's making, that's going to different cities and wrestling, making appearances. So you're going to go right back on the horse, and uh, it's amazing. And I'm echo that what the doctors say. I mean, King, you, you know, you survived the cardiac arrest, um, back to wrestling full time, to having a stroke while. Showing love, affection, and you're <laughs> right back to and there you were on TV. You're on the WB Network hosting Hall of Fame and WrestleMania, and no one would have known that just a week and a half ago the King was in ICU for three days and could not say a word. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that, but that's the, that's the way it is. And what have I got coming up? Let's see what do we got coming up. Well, we got to talk about WrestleMania. Oh, we didn't get to WrestleMania yet. You called the match Andre the Giant. Took to to Andre. You called the the battle royal that took place uh, in the pre-show. You, Jr. and Byron Saxton. I don't know why Saxton was out there, but you and Jr. and <laughs> Saxton were uh, were out there ringside. Yeah, a great o- a great ovation from the fans when they introduced uh, you and you and Jr. And it was great to to hear you on a, a WrestleMania telecast. Well, it was it was cool in the fact that uh, you know what. The, I think the whole thing was seven hours long from the, I mean, the official start of, uh, of WrestleMania during the, you know, the pre-show, the kickoff show, the matches and all this stuff. We, JR and I did the first, the first, the match, the first match was the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. And JR, like I said, JR, myself and, and Byron did that. Um, but what was so, what was so amazing was the place was, it was, I think we started our, our match started around 4:25, 4:30, or something like that, which the show actually came on at like four. They had opened the doors at 2:30, and it was unbelievable. It was like the place was almost packed at 4:30. It was perfect. Yeah, it was. It was like it was almost packed. It was a what a what an unbelievable uh, whole week that was down there in New Orleans. I mean, it was just it was unbelievable. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I enjoyed. The paper. I thought it was one of the best WrestleManias ever, until after Rousey's match. I think it peaked at Ronda Rousey, and then had a steady decline. But I, it was building to be one of the best WrestleManias that I ever seen. But then I think the, I think the fans. I think I just got exhausted. I just tapped out. Uh, <laughs> it just was like I became cynical. I came because I was just so tired about watching wrestling for seven hours, and you take in. The Hall of Fame, which was what five hours. You take in the NXT I watched, that was three hours. Then you have Raw, and then SmackDown last night. I mean, that's three, five. That's twelve. That's I mean, that's almost twenty hours of wrestling in one, two, three, f- five days, four days. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that's our that's the Super Bowl for for WWE. So that only that that kind of stuff only happens once a year. But I mean, just just seven hours 
of WrestleMania matches to for the people to sit through all of those. But let me let me just ask you. Well, you said yourself you thought it was like the best WrestleMania ever, but I know because I know what a big Ronda Rousey fan you are. Was that match not like a thousand times better than you thought it would be? Or or I mean, it was for me. I mean, I thought, you know, I was I was I was a little worried about that. I, it, I, was, it was great. I was worried too, um, but she was terrific. I think she. Oh man, she was great. She came out and did everything that she was supposed to do, and I think you know, hats off to Triple H and Kurt Angle, who are the veterans, you know, who are the you know, Hall of Fame wrestlers that they are, for handling that match. And I think Stephanie, I think all four of them did terrific. Yeah, it was a great. It's like I said, a thousand times better than I was yeah. expecting it to be now now king we talked about jim Cornette being upset with you know the um, he's probably upset with the fireball the to the penis but <laughs> how about a 10 year old kid being raw tag team champ I and mean, that has to be Cornette has to be having an aneurysm yeah and you know what i i don't know whose idea that was or or, or whatever but <laughs> that was that was maybe one of the few things that i might not have um uh, not that I didn't necessarily agree with, but I just didn't understand yet. I mean, there may be some more reason for it, but I just I didn't really understand that. Well, he's a son of a referee. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, John Cone. Yeah, I, I didn't I I didn't know that. No, nope. you know it's funny. I don't think I don't know how many people in the company even knew that uh, until after it happened or whatever. But uh, I thought it was a Make a Wish. I thought it was a, a live. <laughs> oh, man. Make hey, a wish. You know, you know what? Uh, this is. I did see a tweet that said, uh, "What's it? What's the little boy's name?" Nicholas. <clears throat> Nicholas. Nicholas Cohn is ten years old, and he's won more titles in the WWE than Jerry Lawler oh, or Jake Snake Robertson. I Robert saw said. that too. <laughs> did you see that? Yeah. Oh well. What are you gonna say? Nic- Nicholas is one to know at WrestleMania, and Jerry Lawler's zero and one. Yeah, you're right. So we got to have Nicholas versus Jerry Lawler next year at WrestleMania. To... <laughs> God, but no, that was uh, that was kind of really. Hey, look, ridiculous. I think I'm out there doing. I'm out there doing the. Uh, uh, we're right in the middle of doing the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I'm just saying something. Right and I look down at my phone, and here's a uh, text from Michael Cole saying, "Don't be afraid to mention your WrestleMania match." <laughs> <laughs> What a jerk, huh? <laughs> somebody, somebody did say that uh, during the telecast. Reminded that Cole was zero and one. I, I think it was Graves or somebody mentioned. Oh, Cole, you're one and zero at WrestleMania undefeated. Oh yeah, he loves to mention that. <laughs> God, jeez. All right, so you're uh, so WrestleMania. I mean, that was the only thing to WrestleMania. Did you hang around or? or uh, not during, not during the entire thing. Yeah. I wanted to get back to the after party. You had a couple guys uh, that were. You know, uh, Gary Barnage and yeah. uh, Angela Williams waiting for me at the uh, after party. How was the after party? Yeah, so- you know, I go every year for at least, at least for that with you. I, I go to I go to that thing. But was it a uh, every year? It seems to get more and less. It gets less and less more wild. And less. <laughs> well, it, it <laughs> more and tamed. It, this was even less and less wild again. Did they st- I don't know. I think I think something that you know. I think a few years ago we talked about this. It's like they're they're they keep trying to condense it down to just talent and their families. Yeah. And when you get, when you get it down to just talent and their families, and I, you know, there's nothing, nothing wild is going to be going on. It's just, uh, I don't know. It's just, yeah, this was, this was, um, I mean, it was good, you know, but it just turns out to be just a, everybody that just, I don't know. You just sit around and talk about, what you know, the show that just went on is not like nothing, <laughs> nothing unusual to talk about. And you, and you eat. At least the food's good. You eat. Oh, the food's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm yeah, I'm sad that I missed some of that stuff and the after party and all that. But just uh, oh, and the other the other thing I I loved um, the Undertaker coming back. I thought that was done great. <sighs> What you didn't like it? I want a biker taker. I wanted to hear the revving. Oh, of the that one doesn't happen. You know, from, 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 from. No, no biker taker. Never again. <laughs> he looked great though. I, he looked in great yeah, shape, man. Absolutely did. That's what a new hip does to you. And John Cena, he's the, he's the best, man. He's a good guy. 
John Cena sitting in the crowd as a fan, <laughs> watching half the pay per view. I'm like, man, he's gonna sit for the whole thing, just sit there and watch the whole pay per view as a fan. But it was great. He <laughs> jumped the barricade, ran up, ran up the ramp to when he was told that Undertaker was gonna be there. It was he was terrific. Cena was great. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. So overall, overall, great weekend for for you, King. And what about what about the the last match, yeah. man? That was a surprise. Yeah, that was a I mean, that jeez. You know, it was okay. I mean, I'm old school, and you know, I think <laughs> if if two big guys are going at it in a big match like that, especially a guy like Brock Lesnar, there has to be some blood. There has to be some kind of. Well, then you were happy, weren't you? Oh yes, <laughs> I'm sure that you know that wasn't a, you know, something that was done on purpose. Um, no, absolutely not. But uh, you know Brock throwing those elbows, and I just saw the blood pour, and it was squirting out uh, over Reigns' arm, and I'm thinking, well, they're gonna stop the match to wipe Roman's face because that's what that's what they usually do, right? Um, and then I'm thinking, then he kept kicking out of F5s, and I'm like, oh no, they're gonna have Reigns win after kicking out of five F5s, and being a bloody mess, and being a bloody mess. I mean, the whole place is just gonna. Just boo him out of the building, but then you know, Rain. They kept the blood. He had the uh, with the crimson mask. What they what they what they call they call yes, it? What they call, <laughs> did they call it the crimson mask? No, not no. I mean, that's what that's what uh, the old Florida announcer used to call yeah, it. Yeah, I love that term. But the, they, he had the crimson mask, and he you know they let the match keep going. Obviously, you can't just stop at WrestleMania main event match. Um, no, and that was and that was that was cut was too bad that he wasn't gonna. There was nothing they could do to stop that. Yeah. Let's get it over with. So then they, you know, he. But like you said, I, I mean, I heard, I'm like you. I was, uh, you know, I didn't see any of this, uh, but I heard that there was some, uh, some, up, some people that were upset backstage after it was over with the, uh, I think the amount of blood and that sort of stuff. And so uh, we're still, now we're still waiting to find out what's going to be the outcome of that, I guess, huh? Yeah. Um, Brock, you know, this report came out that there was some kind of confrontation backstage, and then Brock resigns <laughs> with the WWE. <laughs> but there's all these all these reports. That well, it's, it's not, a, let me just say this: now, you you know, I would think that he had already resigned. Well, yeah, I, before the before the match, right? Yeah, but some are some are saying it, it's a, it's a, a short term deal. Some are saying that he's able to wrestle, at, he's able to fight in UFC while being contracted with WWE. There's all these different reports, and we don't know. I mean, <laughs> no one knows except for Vince and Brock and Paul Heyman, even the Paul way, Heyman. The, the way it was set up, I think everybody in that in that uh, New Orleans <laughs> knew that that uh, Brock was going to lose and was going to go back to being, you know, with Dana White being there and all this kind of stuff. That Brock was going to lose and then go back to UFC, and so it was a, I mean, it was a big, big surprise to everybody. Everybody. <laughs> this is according to the to the reports that the finish wasn't, you know, discussed with anybody other than the people involved, and even the ref didn't know until halfway through the match. I mean, that, that's the when I read stuff like that, I that's what makes me love wrestling is because you can keep something a secret like that and not even not anybody know, and you can dictate it, and the fans were surprised because, like like you said, I was thinking Reigns was going to win and walk out at WrestleMania. And, that's the last they're going to see of Brock Lesnar, but apparently not. And now, King, you're going to go to Saudi Arabia, and you're going to be a part of the greatest Royal Rumble event with uh, you and JR, and you're going to see Reigns and Lesnar in a steel cage match. Oh, my gosh. In front of 60,000 people in the wow. stadium. <laughs> this is going to be crazy. <laughs> you're going to love the travel, King. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> but uh, it's a whole slew of... Uh, Tight, like seven titles are going to be on the line. You're going to have the 50 guys in the ring. And uh, you and JR, I mean, they announced the announced team. It's, I think it's Cole, Saxon, and Graves, but you and JR? Yeah, I got, I, yeah there's, I don't know. I don't know what exactly yet, what we're going to do. But you're going to be there. You're going to be in Saudi Arabia. I think so. King in Saudi Arabia. Now, the place that you're going to is, it's named after a king, I think. Um, oh, is it really? Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm pulling it up on my fancy dancy computer. So I think there could be a tie-in with the king in Saudi Arabia. You know, this place named after. Um, let's see here. Uh, it's a uh, King Abdullah Sports Cities International Stadium. 
So King Abdullah. So they're you know you could be King Jerry Lawler, right? Are you like I guess. Him? Or is that against <laughs> the know. rules? I don't know. I don't. Tell, I don't know, man. I'm telling you. I think you get a. I I know I got a little sheet of paper that said you must abide by and adhere to and all of their customs and ways and all of that sort of stuff when you're when you're over there. So you know maybe that maybe they only recognize one king you may not be able to wear a crown or anything over there oh boy uh, i don't know how that's gonna go yeah you're gonna just be known be as known as jerry lala <laughs> i don't know <laughs> so we'll see but it's good so uh yeah so overall a good weekend for you uh exhausting weekend is finally the one exhausting week of the year is over and uh, now you can get back to your regular schedule. Even after the stroke, your king is going to be making appearances and wrestling. So where are you going to be this weekend? Well, uh, first of all, next Monday, um, next Monday early, we have Mick Foley is going to be at our club down on Beale Street. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to be doing a little meet and greet, meet and greet down there and. I think where they're going to induct him into our Memphis Wrestling Hall of Fame and up all that stuff while he's there. That's going to be uh, next Monday. Then on Friday the 20th, I'm doing a little show up in Bolivar, Tennessee. Uh, from my old buddy Burt Prentice is doing a benefit show up in Bolivar, Tennessee. And then on the next day, the 21st, I got to go down to College Station, Texas. Texas A&M. Johnny Manziel. Mm. Yeah. So you're right and back on the horse. Right back on the horse. That's good. That's good, King. Yeah. yeah. Any um geez, we covered a lot. Did you uh Yeah, we did, didn't we? <laughs> we covered the whole weekend. We covered your uh covered the stroke. Covered the, your future after the stroke. I mean, um we, we talked about the Andre documentary a little bit. You were you're all over that. You were a lot of FaceTime for the King. Oh, I look like I wait I look like I need to go on that diet that uh, I don't know what was happening there. But uh, that was not a pretty pictures of me. When they when they filmed that, but it was I don't know I don't even. I, well, it was in your house. Several, yeah, f- yeah, several months ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, they came down to film some stuff down at the club and everything. But the, but they did use a lot of stuff of me in there. Yeah. I think mainly because I talked a lot about the old territory days, you know, and it kind of helped bring along the stuff about how it was <laughs> with Andre before cable TV and all that, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, the whole the territories and going to you know national TV and how affected. But that was you know it was great to see you. It was great to you know hear about Andre the Giant and um, the whole story. It's just sad to hear you know someone like that that millions of people watched you know died by himself in a, in a hotel oh, room. That was that was the saddest, wasn't it? Yeah, that was that was bad. That was that was probably the saddest part of the movie documentary you want to call it <laughs> documentary i think yeah but all right, king. all right i guess we're done this week huh? i think we are we'll be back next week um king any uh final final words i mean do you want to say anything i mean i'm sure you're gonna get bombarded on social media about the stroke and people wishing giving you well wishes and whatnot but do you want yeah you and... don't have to do that that's okay <laughs> everything's fine <laughs> but anything you want to say to the fans after this episode special episode of dinner with the king no, what are you trying to get me to say something? Like I don't perfect? know. Like you say, you know, <laughs> thanks in advance for the well wish. I mean, I don't know what you want to. You know, people no, are going to be. I, I want to be like Vince. There, just, just don't, don't bother. Don't it's fine. I appreciate it. <laughs> but you'll be checking your Twitter though. Yeah, I want to send. I want to send out my little uh, my little message from Bret Hart too. I was really, I really appreciate that. He sent me a uh, cartoon that he. I, I said uh, I want to send out that cartoon on on the Twitter that Bret Hart sent for me or did, did for me back in the day. He did it all the way back in 1995. And, uh, after we talked at, at, uh, at the Russell kind, he sent me a little message on my phone saying, Hey, you, you sounded like you needed a little, uh, a little pick me up. So I, uh, here's this cartoon I did for you back when we were doing our kiss my foot match. <laughs> so I'm going to send that out and let everybody see that. It's cool. That's cool. All right, we'll be back next week here on uh, on Dinner with the King. King, you know, as a, a friend and a fan of yours, I'm glad you're well. I know you hate me saying this, but uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you're well. And I was worried about you during WrestleMania week, watching you on TV, hoping that nothing would 
happen or relapse or something. I, I don't know. And I'm glad that no one leaked it out. We have people, faithful people in the wrestling industry that didn't leak out a big uh, news story like, uh, you know, Jerry Lawler having a stroke. So my, I'm very happy about that. That was good. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you, everybody. Well, did Vince say anything to you? About um, the stroke or anything? They say, oh, that's a stroke. That's it. <laughs> stroke, big deal. Stroke, What's big my deal? No, I actually didn't say anything. No? But we didn't get it. We didn't get a chance to be around each other that, that much. No? Not at all? Even backstage at Hall of Fame? or No, Triple H came over and got the whole story from me. Uh, but uh, other than that, that was it. What did he say? Vince is so busy during those times. I don't, I don't even want to bother me with a near-death story. He's got so much stuff going on. <laughs> what did Triple H say about it? Uh, he was just, like, amazed. He said, man, it's unbelievable. All right. Well, we'll talk to everybody next week uh, here at Dinner with the King. You can follow us on Twitter, Dinner with King. We're on iTunes. We're on Stitcher and all the podcast platforms. Really appreciate everybody sticking with us for the last couple of weeks with no shows, but now you know why. And uh, King, we'll talk to you next week, man. All right. Stay on your diet. You got to lose one pound this week. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> all right, guys. See you, man. The preceding show is a Pod Avenue production.